So today I'm doing the 10 art style challenge where I draw my little Sona guy in a bunch of different art styles. I'm definitely late to the party. This challenge has been around for at least four years, I think up to seven years old, but I only recently got a drawing tablet, so it is what it is. Uh, this was a lot of footage to do, obviously. I had like seven hours worth on my poor little laptop. I sped it up as much as possible because of that, but uh, the sketching part goes by really, really fast. Too fast to really say anything about it. I did all of the sketches in one go, and then I do the line art and color for each separate art style. So I will be able to talk about each individually once we get there, but for now the sketch portion, portion is just kind of like really fast and a, consider it like a messy introduction type thing. All of the art styles I chose are really sentimental to me in some way. A couple of them have inspired my own art style, but even when they haven't, there's still things that I really like to interact with. It also really helped me think about my own art style and where I want it to be. I draw in a couple different styles, sometimes more cartoony, sometimes more like semi-realism, but it definitely made me think about things like line weight and are my lines connected or do they need to be connected, which isn't something I always think about but probably should. When you're replicating a style like Gravity Falls, all of the lines are very uniform and all of them are very connected, which makes sense. It's a very animation-friendly art style versus things like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where there's a lot of variation in line weight. It's just interesting to think about and interesting to think about where I can apply that to my own style depending on what media I'm trying to make. So, Gravity Falls. It has a pretty simplistic art style, like I mentioned, it's very animation friendly, as it should be. It isn't something that has really inspired me art-wise, but it is something that has inspired me in other ways since I first watched it. This was the first drawing that I did, and my lines are a little shaky, that improves throughout the night, but it, it is what it is. I think the character translated really well in the style. Like, I could be convinced that they're like a background character in the show. I also did not draw the background for this. I put backgrounds in for all of them. This one, I stole a picture and put in the background. It's fine. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not selling this. I do that for a couple more of the pictures. Do not flay me about it. If you flay me, that means you are a prep or a poser.
And then on to the Ghibli art style. Ghibli? Ghibli? I don't know which is the correct one. I know this is debated. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I'm calling it Ghibli. When I first did the sketches, my brother had dropped in at one point and said that it didn't really look Studio Ghibli, and by the time I was finished, I showed it to him and he said it did sort of resemble Studio Ghibli. So that is a win. I, for references, used Howl from Howl's Moving Castle, mostly because I just wanted to look at Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. Unlike Gravity Falls, this one has definitely inspired my personal style by a long shot. I have loved Studio Ghibli since I found out that it existed, specifically Howl's Moving Castle. That was one of the first movies that I remember watching and being like, holy shit. <laughs> Ugh. And then I like read the book as a little third grader and then I told everybody that like this movie is amazing I love it so much and the book is so good did you know he's a ginger in the book oh my god um that's a pretty accurate impression of third grader me I even have a picture that I did on my dad's computer on MS Paint of the Alice Moving Castle characters. I'll put that up now because that's fun. There's a little art progress for you from a third grader to a 20 year old. <laughs> absolute masterpiece am i right anyway onto this lesser piece of art i'm now actually doing the background i'm doing I'm just some simple clouds but i i think that sells it pretty well and yeah i like this one it's not my favorite it's not the most accurate but it is nice And now on to Adventure Time. I also stole a background for this one. I think that the little character translated okay in the style, but I wouldn't be convinced that they're an actual character in the show. Uh, it's still cute though. I really like this one. Adventure Time hasn't inspired my style much other than when I use my little Sona. Sometimes I draw him with dot eyes instead of actual eyes, but Oh my god, Adventure Time is so good. I have not watched Fiona and Cake yet. I don't have HBO. I've heard so many good things and it destroys my little heart. Okay, on to Jojo. This style, I think, has inspired me art-wise the most out of all of them. I only got into them in high school around COVID, but oh my god, I was so obsessed. I never finished Steel Ball Run, but by god, I... Oh, I was so obsessed. I cosplayed Fu for Halloween that year. It was such a thing. It was such a phase. And JoJo's art style is like a virus. You draw fan art of it once and it forever embeds itself into your art style. That is a warning for any artists who are getting into JoJo. I, seriously, you do it once and it never fully goes away. You're, you're going to be hatching. It's crazy. That being said, this drawing isn't my favorite. Um... 
It's not bad. I experimented. I did um, a half toning layer, which I barely comprehend other than I know it's meant to be screen toning, but I've, it's so complicated. I don't understand digital art. <laughs> This one is unfortunately my least favorite. I tried to experiment with trying to make it look 3D and no line art, and I kind of paid for that because it didn't turn out good. It's disappointing, but it is reality. I went with the Animal Crossing GameCube style rather than modern Animal Crossing. I was planning on doing the little like snail headband vibe, but I changed my mind and went with the classic horns. Which, I don't mind. Like, that's what my Animal Crossing GameCube character looks like. I'm sure that if I went a little harder and, you know, tried to put some more effort in, it would have created a better product. But at this point, I was recording into the wee hours of the morning. It went on until, like, 5 a.m. I don't- this wasn't around 5 a.m. This would have been around, like, 2 a.m. But that's crazy, and I was- chugging some coffee and it didn't turn out great. I will say though, I tried to like copy the style of the old GameCube. They're not amiibo cards. I don't know what to, the, the the Animal Crossing character cards pre amiibo cards. I tried to replicate that and I think that turned out well. So there is a positive. Seriously though, you would think with the amount of times I've drawn Animal Crossing characters just on this channel that this would have been one of the better ones but i haven't done it in a animal crossing style before so it turned out bad very i'm 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 distraught <laughs> So this one gets an award for being the most accurate to the source material. Every time I look at it, I get so happy because it really do look like it's from Homestuck. And I know it's a, it's a simple art style, but I feel I think I did a splendid job. Also, if you are curious as to why the outfit is different, there is a official quiz for what your aspect would be and I got the page of life so I drew the page of life outfit. I also would probably die immediately so that's fun. This one is, in my opinion, the second most accurate and also my second favorite. I think I did a pretty decent job replicating the art style. I specifically targeted Diamond and Pearl because, if, if my memory serves me correctly, Pachirisu is from Diamond and Pearl. And the outfit in this one is different to reflect the Pachirisu. And there's Pachirisu in it because I made a stupid freaking pokemon comic in fifth grade where the 
character had a Pikachu and a Pachirisu, and Pikachu would be simply too close to Ash Ketchum. And also, I have a Pachirisu plush, and I love him. He is one of my favorite Pokemon. My actual favorite Pokemon is Drifloon. I don't know why I didn't draw Drifloon. He's splendid. So that's an oof on me. This is another one where I just straight up stole the background, but as a thing that I did good and didn't steal, take a look at that hand. That is one of that is such a good hand. Um, and I think I know the reason why is my brother and my girlfriend were talking about freaking Monster Hunter for like an hour and a half and I had nothing to do but just sit there and listen because I don't play Monster Hunter and at one point I got so bored that I decided to just do some studies of hands and then when doing this I was suddenly decent at drawing hands. But yeah, I like this one a lot. I think I could have done a little bit more with the outfit to zhuzh it up a little, but that is not the challenge. The challenge is not draw good outfits. The challenge is draw intent art styles, and I succeeded, goddammit. So this one I feel may need a little explaining. It is from the Far Side comics by Gary Larson. I was planning on doing The Simpsons, but then I felt like The Simpsons were going to be too similar to Gravity Falls. I was complaining to my brother because I didn't know what to do instead, and he said, do the Far Side comics. And then I said, okay, and then I did the Far Side comics. And it says snail tools because there is an infamous comic where it's just a picture of a cow with some weird messed up tools and then with the caption cow tools and then that was so unfunny that Gar Gary Larson had to apologize for it so that is the context for that this one isn't the most accurate but I love it it's great and speaking of things that I love and that are great, this one is my favorite out of the whole batch. It isn't the most accurate to the source material, but I still love it. This is another one that had a lot to do with my style and my growth of style. It is, um... I specifically tried to replicate Arena Tanamora's style, but it didn't really come off and I didn't really think people would pick up on that so I just put shoujo beat if you looked at it before I said that and thought hey that kind of resembles arena tenamora style you get 50 gold stars and a cookie of your choice I love you marry me ah however I would like to speak on an uncomfortable point with arena tenamora I know her from Full Moon. I loved Full Moon so much. When I first read it, I was in like fifth grade. I got a hand-me-down of the second manga and then I was obsessed with that and then like watched the show. That being said, that the age gap is the most uncomfortable one I've ever been confronted with. And that is I, I, I was thinking of rewatching it and then discovered the age gap because I didn't remember it existing at all. Um, and now I can't because I keep thinking about it. It's like at least 12 years and not 12 years between two adults, mind you. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna stick to like not watch i adore the art style though something about it is so nice i love the frills i love the bows this there aren't frills and bows and it's also a man so i didn't get to do the big anime eyes which is why i don't think it translated great to her style i still really like it and i am also aware there are probably worse age gaps in shoujos but i only watched like two 
ever, I'm not really into the romance genre. <laughs> the second shoujo that I've watched would be Kimi ni Tadoke. I love it. I love that. I, it's the best one. It doesn't have a 12 year age gap. And if I ever do another 10 art style challenge, it's probably going to be on there because, oh my god, it is... It's such a comfort show. I highly recommend that one. Go watch Kimini Tadoke. And to finish things off, there's my personal style. I forgot to record half of it. I went downstairs to get a cup of coffee, came back up, drew the line art, started coloring, paused to get another coffee, except I didn't pause. I just realized that I never unpaused in the first place. And yeah, that is what it is. I'm actually really upset about it. Whatever. If I were to do this a second time, let me know what styles I should do because they don't necessarily have to be things that I'm super close to or mean a lot to me. They could just be cool styles. So let me know your input on that. Let me know if you liked this. Let me know if you hated this, but also for some reason watched it the whole way through. Sorry, I don't have a lot to say about my own style. I think it's pretty run-of-the-mill. I don't think it's bad, but I've seen a lot of better styles. Eh, it's a th it, I think that is probably a sentiment carried by most artists.